Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 17th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today by Jan about some developments with phishing. There's a lot of talk, of course, also about the use of AI in creating phishing campaigns. Personally, haven't really seen much here. A lot of dubious numbers being spread in that respect. Jan looked in particular at, you know, do typos still happen in phishing? Because if attackers are using AI tools in order uh, to create those phishing emails, well, uh, you're less likely going to see these typos. You still see them. They're uh, still pretty common. Of course, they're common in some normal email as well. And uh, that just leads to this being not necessarily a great uh, distinguishing feature here, but uh, still something that still happens uh, with current uh, phishing attacks, AI or no AI. Also, one thing Jan points out here is the increasing use of uh, the interplanetary file system or IPFS URLs in these phishing emails. I've seen this for quite a while now, and this is certainly something that you probably want to look for because that may be actually a little bit uh, better and easier to detect a kind of artifact of uh, phishing emails these days. And Cisco is reporting that they're seeing active exploitation of uh, thus far unpatched vulnerability in Cisco iOS XE. This vulnerability affects the web management user interface. It does allow an unauthenticated user to add an arbitrary user to the system with level 15, which is, well, the highest level that you can get on a Cisco iOS device like this. Best guidance here from Cisco is, well, don't be stupid and expose this stuff to the internet. If you have these web-based management interfaces, uh, please you know, set up a VPN or restrict access to them in some way. Turn them off and then maybe have a little script via SSH or so to turn them on again. And hopefully you have your SSH authentication under control. Again, this has actively been exploited for about four weeks now. There is more details in the Cisco blog about potential indicators of compromise, like what IP address, for example, were used to launch these attacks from. And one of the issues that keeps coming up, uh, we actually had, I think a year or so ago, a SANS EDU student write a research paper about it, is uh, domains that have not been renewed, but, uh, well, uh, there are still, like, uh, IP addresses with them, or in some cases, email addresses are still sort of in use. The problem here is that once the domain has not been renewed, of course, these emails will not be delivered. The sender may not necessarily watch out for these uh, delivery failure messages that should then happen, particularly if these are automated emails. The Dutch country level registra.nl now established a new project where during the 40 day quarantine phase, that's the phase where the domain has basically lapsed but the original owner could still get it so no new user will be able to pick it up during that phase if they do detect any significant email going to this particular domain and they basically just set up a mail server for the domain with the respective filters they will notify the last known contact being registered for that domain that contact will then be able to see subjects not the complete content of the email to then decide if they have to take the domain back or if well they can still let it go and uh, don't care about the emails being received by the next owner of that domain interesting approach of course you could say it's somewhat just to entice people to actually keep their domains renewed, which in reality is probably really what you should do anyway. Always uh, tricky to have a domains lapse like this and just give them up in particular if you use them for some real things in the past. 
And then we got updates to Samba, the open source implementation of the SMB protocol. Uh, nothing uh, critical here. A couple of sort of more denial of service uh, style vulnerabilities. For the most part, this will affect uh, some uh, Linux based uh, network storage devices and such. If you are affected, just uh, wait for your particular distribution or manufacturer to come up uh, with updated packages. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.